Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer and my guest this week is Zenji. And Zenji is a disciple of Muji, who was a disciple of Papaji, who was a disciple of Ramana Maharshi. And um, if that's not enough alliteration for you, today happens to be Zenji's birthday. So <laughs> happy birthday, Zenji. Oh, thank you very much, Rick. <laughs> it's my pleasure to, to be here today with you. Yeah. And uh, the way this got set up was that um, Zenji was trying to organize for uh, an interview with Muji. And Muji said, why don't you do it? And yes, s yes, so yes. He's, Zenji told me this. And I said, OK, we'll do it. Yes, um, yes. And unlike most of my interviews, I don't know as much about you as I know about some of the mm. people. I, you know, because usually I listen to people's audios or you know YouTube mm. YouTube things for a week or so yes. before I interview them. And um, I suppose I should have done more homework and listened to more Muji uh, before this, but I didn't do that mm. either. So so we're just going to yes. fly by the seat of our pants and um, <laughs> <laughs> and hear your story. Uh, but judging from the email you yeah. sent me, mm. it's it's an interesting one. Oh, really? You know, I didn't. You see, first of all, I would like to say is um, <clears throat> that uh, um, I'm happy. Uh, this is, I've never spoken like this before. Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't any homework done, you know. No, that's uh, okay. The only homework, the only homework perhaps uh, is that I've taken uh, somehow inside, you know, the message that... Uh, Muji so willingly shares uh, mm -hmm. that kind of struck me uh, right from the moment that I first met him. Yeah, there was something uh, that really hit me somewhere <clears throat> that was uh, uh, somehow striking at something that uh, I had not heard before. Right, you know, with some simplicity, mm -hmm. um, and so. You see, I'm already maybe going right into that. You know, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Rather than uh, because I'm not sure how much uh, my history uh, is important. Because uh, from my own experience, I know that uh, sometimes we have the mind has a tendency to compare, and we take notes on these things, and then we think, oh yeah, this is uh, happens happened to him, and this and that happened, you know, and then there's a checklist, and then we think if something is not. Uh, Checked off, then somehow we are not qualified. Well, you know, if a person discovery. only listened to <clears throat> one interview, they <clears throat> they might do that. But what I find yeah. is people <clears throat> listen to a lot of them, and they discover that everybody's story is different. Oh yes, yes. And uh, that they pick up sort of bits and pieces in different stories mm -hmm. that that they might be able to relate to personally. Uh, but I think in this day and age, when there are so many people out there teaching and even non-teachers like yourself who are just sort of speaking from their experience yeah, yeah. people are kind of getting the idea that obviously they don't just because this guy happened to be drinking a glass of orange juice when he awakened they don't have to go out yeah, and yeah. corner the market on orange yeah. juice you know it's going to be different for yeah, different sure, people sure sure yeah 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 so what i find in in doing these interviews is that there are kind of two themes or threads you know there's the personal history of the the, the per, you know stuff mm -hmm. the person went to went through yeah. and some people aren't interested in that at all some people find that fascinating you know and they want to hear it and they they kind mm -hmm. of like yeah. get they give me hell if they don't <laughs> ask that of people um and other people you know they just want to hear what the guy what knowledge the guy has to say so I usually like to do both and you know the the, okay. the ratio may shift according to whom I'm speaking mm -hmm. with but um Yes, yes. You know, but you do have an interesting background. I mean, you started out as a kid, you know, wanting to know God and considering becoming a priest and things like that. So it might be worth yes, kind yes. of sketching okay. through that. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's it's an interesting thing because um, uh, a lot of those things actually I only remembered because uh, I spoke with my wife. You know, like what would I write? You know, like a little bit because I had absolutely not, no idea what I could put down, you know, and, and, and without her help, you know, I probably, those points would not have emerged. So what I'm trying to point to here is that actually it, there's somehow memory, uh, you know, like what we pick from memory or what comes, it's like very, you know, it's almost arbitrary, you know? Yeah, you, so you, you just why, pick out little bits and pieces. Exactly, yeah. so we cannot really, I mean, the story itself, you know, is kind of like, in a way, I could have said something completely different, but it's true. Uh, it is something that um, I have um, 
somehow I don't know out of nowhere came this uh, I was kind of fascinated by uh, priesthood or something or like when I go, went to church uh, I, I, I somehow liked I mean I don't know I would celebrate at home uh, mass sometimes you know like I would do what the, what the priest would do mm -hmm. even though the priest himself was not really somebody I liked you know, <laughs> thing is because yeah. So you're talking about, um, you know, your your boyhood yeah. in interest in religion and doing what the priests yeah. were doing and, and so yeah. on. So, you know, there's some yes. kind of incentive in you. Yeah, it's something, uh, you know, that was not something I, I just came spontaneously like this. I don't mm -hmm. know where it came from. Uh, and um, I'm just also reminded of uh, an earlier experience that struck me that I uh, that only reoccurred to me again after um, going to satsang, um, you know, when, when the spiritual search maybe more intensified more. And that was like uh, when I was very young. I don't know how old I was, but uh, very, very young, uh, before school age, you know. A spontaneous contemplation that um, what I am doesn't age. You see, every year uh, we celebrate birthdays. Like sure, yeah, like age. today. Yeah. Today is again. Uh -huh. uh, they say that I'm 45. Mm -hmm. and um, But somehow what I knew m myself as uh, didn't get any older, somehow. And I remember I, had spoke, I told my brother that. We were sitting on a staircase. I was telling him that. Mm -hmm. Somehow, like an image like this uh, uh, is in my mind. So you had a sense of that, a sense that, of that level of your life that wasn't changing, even though your young body yeah, was growing. Um, and a sense of, a sense, shall we say, maybe a sense of existence, a sense of. I mean, actually, today I would say the the I am. Yeah. Uh, 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 something was intuitively recognized, maybe mm -hmm. as a ground zero or something. Yeah, you kind of tuned into. Uh, it. It, it was tuned into without uh, it just spontaneously arose like this. Mm -hmm. Did you um, um, did that? Did you remember that as you continued to grow, or did you sort you of see, forget it? And... Um, you see, here is what happens. Despite that, um, it you see the significance of that was not recognized. Right. See, because somehow maybe uh, this intuitive experience is there, but then. Um, my life was pretty much, uh, the life uh, was lived very much like everyone else, like pursuing also worldly endeavors, because this is what I've been, I've accepted basically. It's what, what people I do. Developed, you know, yeah. what people do. Uh, you know, you go, um, not to put anything down, like of course you uh, go pursue education mm -hmm. uh, and a career perhaps, you know, I guess, uh, but actually, even here, you know, uh, I kind of uh, really wanted to go to university to study uh, so that I could uh, join uh, priesthood, you know. But uh -huh. somehow, uh, the financial, uh, financial circumstances in my home, even though we are a middle class uh, family uh, and there is money, it's not like that we're poor or something, but somehow uh, there was not, um, there wasn't really, it didn't feel, uh, because my brother and he, he he was already supported by my parents, you know, to mm. go to school. So myself, you know, I I I, um, I went on to 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 go and pursue a career in in first typesetting and then later on in publishing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but still, you know, even though I I I veered off in the back of my mind, I always, was always thinking, how can I? How could I? How could I get back on track with that somehow like this? And this pretty much uh, went on. Um, it was pretty much in the back of my mind until perhaps uh, my early twenties. That's mm. when you know. Then I went to college, you know, like, a, uh, like f to pursue uh, like middle management career in in printing. Um, and that's when really that kind of fell away. Yeah. Uh, after that. The priesthood idea completely uh, dropped away, but then somehow it was more like now going abroad mm -hmm. was more like this, and then <laughs> eventually uh, uh, this childhood dream of coming to America also came about, where I feel 
uh, the blessing of that was uh, also that that's where really uh, I felt the opportunity uh, came to me really to explore because it was completely new, a new environment, uh, you know, complete different culture, you know. Yeah. And and so many questions came for me because it's so different from what I was brought up in, you know. You came to New so York, right? To New York, yes. Right. Uh, and um, and I was fa it's fa it was fascinating and and all that and then the idea came again to to pursue um, you know a university degree again like maybe philosophy and psychology that was something that started to come as an interest uh, but I couldn't really afford. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know the the, the tu tuition fees, and um, but that night, uh, one of those e evenings when I was studying uh, the the, uh, the material, you know, the course material of various uh, universities in New York, uh, I I walked past uh, some road, a different road than I had ever gone before, but home. I lived in Manhattan at the time, and um, and I came across this. Uh, this uh, the school of practical philosophy hmm. uh, and uh, the school of practical philosophy is um, a school <clears throat> that uh, primarily I mean they primarily uh, offer the teachings of um, of um, Shankaracharya I mean uh, Advaita Vedanta okay uh, and I was struck by that actually the first uh, first week you know was the question was who am I you know, somehow I don't know. It was oh, this sounds right. It's great. You know, I can do this. You know, right. so I went to this school, um, and every week we would be uh, some discourse was given, and then we would apply this practically in our lives. So we would observe. It was our instruction was to observe uh, how di how what we've heard in class. You know, say the teaching or something. How we see that apply in our own lives hmm. um, now not sure that's the way Shankara went about it but it sounds like no, an but interesting this, thing this <laughs> is, yeah this is how I mean some yeah um, that's how they did that yeah um, and the thing uh, was that I, every week I came back I really had nothing to uh, to report you know I mean I didn't I, somehow I felt I couldn't observe anything mm. you know actually I was convinced that that somehow the observing faculty doesn't work properly with me or something. <laughs> because everyone else in the class uh, had all these insights to report, and I was like, and there was nothing, you know? And uh, But anyway, I went on, f uh, stayed there for three years at the school. Mm -hmm. um, after three years, you also were initiated into meditation, and it's trans -medi uh, tra um, transcendental meditation. So I don't know what the connection is with the Maharishi uh, a yogi, you know. That's, that's interesting. Uh, that the school of practical philosophy, which is not part of the TM movement, would have been having people. Did they instruct you in transcendental meditation right there at that school, or did they send you over to the TM center to learn it? No, they instructed you in the school. Huh. You know? I wonder if it, it was really TM, but maybe it was. Maybe in fact that school was started by some TM teacher. Yeah, I know that when I was initiated into this, uh, mm -hmm. there was some uh, process. Yeah, puja. And, a puja, yeah, and there were uh, saints from India, but you know, even if they had mentioned the name, you know, I, it was like for me to, because India was completely foreign to me. Right. So I had whatever name you would mention, uh, I had absolutely, I wouldn't, have, it didn't stick, you know. Right. Um, but anyway, st I started out the first month meditation, great, you know, very good, you know, I was happy. But then after that, I had like say one month meditation was very good, but then it got worse, worse and worse, and so much you know was like war inside, you know. How, so, in what way did it get worse? Uh, that you know the the experiences were got worse, you know. There was not like a just was it wasn't enjoyable anymore. It was not enjoyable uh -huh. and like this, and um, and somehow um, I. Uh, at one point, I felt compelled to leave. Uh, I felt it was not the right thing for me. Okay. The detour into psychotherapy, where um, um, I felt maybe I needed to explore something in that way, <laughs> <coughs> which eventually 
also kind of led me because um, I discovered then that some people talking about the self, something deeper, you know, and all that. And uh, slowly, somehow, this is how I came to 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 hear of uh, Papaji's uh, teaching uh, through Eli Jackson Bear and uh, Gangaji mm-hmm. um, um, on a New York radio show from some, of somebody who is a psychologist um, or social worker. You know, uh, that's how. I kind of see how psychology is then somehow connected to to um the spiritual or should we say or to Advaita again. Sure. Um yeah. So many years of that, maybe five I don't know, maybe five years and something. Also Stuart Schwartz was five, one of my Oh, teachers. so five years you were like going to so, listening to Ganga J uh, things and uh uh I don't I mean I don't know how long maybe if Two three years. Oh, it was two. Uh, okay, um, this was. I left the school of practical philosophy in 1998. So it was in 2001 uh, when 9/11 happened. Uh, mm. and it was really it uh, really. I was deeply hurt inside, you know, because it was such a uh, shocking event, you know. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Were you living in downtown Manhattan? Or? I, I was. I was working uh, on Twenty Third Street, which is. I mean, you see the. You saw the towers very right. clearly. Yeah. Uh, and the magnitude of that. I mean, it was just. I mean, I was for months really. Uh, I'll say really right from the beginning, something was very vulnerable and hurt inside. Yeah, I mean, it shook up the whole nation, but, you know, I've I've heard it said that there was a huge sort of like a post-traumatic stress thing in, in among New Yorkers, you know, who were right yes, there. Yes. There was a big uh, a spike in attendance at uh, psychotherapy sessions and things like mm, that. Mm, yes. And so for myself, uh, I have to say... Um, It also is because somehow I felt that uh, Advaita, had, for myself, even when I heard and when I listened to um, Gangaji speak about these things, because they had kind of a very good, and Eli also, they had a very good way of kind of uh, making sense of that event as well, mm-hmm. which most people... Oh really? They, they they sort of commented on the nine eleven thing. And... Um, yeah, I've heard them do that, mm. and and but perhaps to say yes, because in a way uh, there are forces somehow forces of mind that work also in in you know that work here as well uh, that we've no, that we know ourselves uh, where, where who doesn't know that maybe at some point we maybe we were so angry that we wanted to strike somebody or something mm-hmm. you know? or if something uh, doesn't go our way all those things you know I mean uh, those um, uh, emotional responses something you know I mean we all somehow are familiar with that in one point or another we have had uh, maybe had an experience or something so the, uh, were they were they commiserating with the the hijackers and suggesting that you know th- that their frustration had built to a level that motivated them to, to... Uh, n- no not so much that it's more like actually we understand these kind of events when we actually understand ourselves mm. when we see actually how our own mind works I see see uh, as we identify with mind um, mind that or ego 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 mind. There is a way in which you know there is um, that kind of uh, mechanism, shall we say that, yeah. uh, wants to protect itself. You know, there's a certain protection with that, and when we see life very much in from that uh, narrow view of, and here we could go into this like, uh, uh, you know, like the egoic identity, mm-hmm. which we really believe is the is the truth, or we don't even question that. Uh, it is just a very strong experience somehow. Uh, somehow, um, uh, this somehow how how um, you know this you know where we have a sense that we need to defend ourselves or we yeah. need to, or that life doesn't give us what we need and we need to maybe use aggression to kind of right. better ourselves and stuff like this. Somehow, like these kind of forces, you know. Uh, yeah, so they're saying you can inside, extrapolate right? it from your own experience and multiply it a thousand times, and then maybe you'd be flying airplanes into buildings too. You know, it sounds like um, that's <laughs> um, 
I mean, not sure if that was what they were trying to say, yeah. but uh, for me, that at the time, I have to say, helped you come to terms with it. I I could see that it's a good thing to because the tendency is always to like, to kind of point the finger outside. You know? Right, right. We are very quick to see the faults of others, mm -hmm. but when an event of this of this magnitude occurs, perhaps. Um, Perhaps there's also um, some self-reflection. Some self-reflection. I mean, for myself, take. I could only say, I saw it in myself that uh, somehow this event was so shocking. Also, m uh, the walls I had built in, around myself, in, mm -hmm. you know, like how I protected uh, what I, I have to say, what I thought myself to be, actually. This is really how to, at this point, there was no insight into the truth, you know, mm. no conscious insight into that. For me, I felt I, I was a person, uh, an individual, uh, one among uh, millions, many, yeah. uh, millions, uh, billions, and um, and I'm at the mercy of the elements or something like this. You mm -hmm. know, you felt isolated, isolated, and you know, actually, um, up to this point, very much, um, even though I've feel I had felt like being a very warm person so to speak uh, but I was afraid of hugging people hmm. you know but somehow when this event happened and somehow like this um, there wasn't something crumbled inside and there was more vulnerability and also more like a more something also old trauma actually this is um, uh, what I had mentioned, like trauma from the past emerged and something mm. inside you knew, knew that it was good, that this needed to be faced, you know, that somehow yeah. I felt also more alive. Right. And Interesting. Range, and, and some, somehow through, actually it was, it, I mean, and I said to you, uh, <laughs> when I spoke a little bit of, in my email to you about myself, is that it was really like this, that I was even looking forward to trauma, you know, like a, huh. another traumatic event in my life, because it felt like it was some it was something freeing in that. I don't it know. Kind of, it I, kind of woke you up, broke your shell. Yeah, so yeah so. something because it was there anyway, and now it would emerge, and I could really face something. Could face the whatever I had been trying yeah. to what had been hidden, hidden, and somehow uh, um, I think what we hide, you know, what we kind of lock away. It is not, we may not see it, we may not know about it, but it kind of uh, hi, uh, occupies uh, energy somehow, perhaps, you know? Yeah, yeah, So sure. Because maybe it create, uh, requires a lot of energy to keep something... Uh, Bottle, bottled bottle, up. You know, away, you know, from Yeah, you. yeah. Um, no, good point. And so this this sort of shock of 9-11 kind of shook you up, broke your shell, yes. uh, opened you up. and, and yeah, yeah, and then uh, yeah. that's when, um, now you see, I was not uh, at that time consciously really looking for truth. You see, really what I was looking for at the time was love. Huh. See my e even though you were listening to Gangaji and all that stuff, you, you, yes, yes. you felt like you weren't. I mean, looking back on that, you felt like you weren't looking for the essence of what she was saying. You were looking for love. Um, or say like this, uh, in my mind's view, I was looking for love and, and I, actually lo looking to um, uh, whatever I felt was missing in life. I was looking for this, you know. Yeah. And love was actually uh, something that was the highest on the list. You yeah, mean personal some, love, like a like marriage, or do you mean um, sort of just love in uh, general? With, uh, with for me, actually, that I didn't have a good idea about this, but uh, I would say love was for me also that uh, I would be able to share that. So that means a person as well. Right, right. Uh, meaning like yes, there was. You see, this is how it is. There was desire for that, um, mm -hmm. the desire for a personal love or like having a relationship was there, mm -hmm. was very strong. Uh, or strong, uh, strong enough, mm -hmm. and truth, you know, was very abstract. I, what, what, what does that mean? You know, yeah, I, yeah. looking for truth. I mean, the opportunity that existed or that exists for a human being um, to to find truth. You know, I had absolutely 
uh, no idea what that meant at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, today I know. Actually, today I I feel that is the highest. Right. You know, the highest because um, I think also when you say truth, it's so abstract. Who wants truth? You know. I mean, it's. I mean, uh, I mean uh, to most people, something... that that means some some set of beliefs. You know, I re I read this in a book, and therefore it's the truth. And yes, you, sh yes. you should believe it too. And yes, yes. <laughs> So like love was something that was meaningful to me. And yeah, so you could perhaps, relate. To, you could relate to that. It was. Yeah. So the potential is much bigger. But what I actually, what really, what seemed compelling to me at the time was that when I heard these things about you are this love you're looking for. Mm. Uh, you see, oh, it's already here. Uh -huh. Wonderful. It's great. So, may I don't need to look outside of myself so maybe like this but you see I still was still a very limited view limited it's good you know somehow it, it got the foot in the door so to speak uh, yeah but uh, it is today I realize how that it's still limited but it was at the time uh, what uh, what uh, brought me into uh, maybe a deeper truth uh, pushed me into this and in the mind was negotiating like you see you can get some love here you know like I mean, it's <laughs> well it's kind of an interesting point in a way because a lot of people a lot of teachers these days they speak from sort of a high perspective or uh, a, you know a realized perspective and they often sort of give advice which pertains to their level of experience yes. but it doesn't necessarily um, acknowledge that people may have some steps or stages or of yeah. experience to go through before they reach that level as well in fact you know a lot of people say well there are no levels there is no there are no progressive stages therefore just sort of stop your search and realize you're that and yeah. and, and that may be a little abstract for some people you know? <coughs> in, in your case you felt yeah. a need for love and that served as a stepping stone to yes, the, yes. the next thing and the next thing yes uh, yeah, I mean, uh, at the time now today, I know yes, uh, um, because you see, even what I'm saying right now is still very much. I'm talking to you very much from that perspective what I identified as at the time as a person. Right. You see? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, and I think what happens is that uh, the teachers that uh, you've mentioned, because they actually they won't want to entertain this, uh, because ultimately. Um, you see, the absolute truth, you know, is uh, beyond that. I mean, you see, it's like um, yes. Uh, let me just say this is, was uh, a stepping stone for me. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, somehow, uh, after a few years, um, somehow I had the privilege and the honor, or, you know, the great fortune, I would say. Uh, to 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 meet Muji uh, in 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 the uh, in the U.S. and that was in Boston uh -huh. first and then you know he came to New York, Washington D.C. Um, in Philadelphia even uh, and I had like he was there for three weeks. That was in 2006. Um, and um, and right from the beginning, even before meeting him, because we we organized us uh, had uh, we we received the DVD. And there was, um, I should also say that at some point, two years before meeting Muji, an intense love for Papaji arose. And I mm -hmm. wanted to meet Papaji. But I knew, or the mind knew, uh, we cannot really meet him in person because he had already uh, passed on. Yeah. Um, and so, but he had DVD recordings, so I can get those. So I had like a ordered a, a bunch of uh, DVDs uh, and watched watched them every night one mm. uh, like uh, of the Om Shanti series which are highly prized you know among uh, devotees or disciples of his and and uh, one uh, wonderful I was oh I was so happy in the evening after work I would put a DVD in and for two hours satsang mm, nice. and, and yeah like this uh, and um, Two, I mean, two years after this uh, love affair happened with Papaji, um, I had the great fortune to meet uh, to meet him in Muji. Right. This was actually what it was for me. Uh, un, un, I didn't expect that, but you know, when I met him in Boston that time in 2006, in October 2006, I knew Papaji. Yeah. 
I'm meeting Papaji. It was like, yeah. how how is that? He looks differently, you know, physically. It's not that. It's the it's something, you know, like it's it's a force, an energetic force, something uh, maybe can call it consciousness. Uh, something was uh, something was there that was what I knew Papaji as from my experience on DVD, uh, and uh, I. I recognize. I mean, there was uh, immediately. I, I what I what I felt, what I saw is not Muji as the body, but as some as the presence. Mm -hmm. It is it, almost like his 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 uh, in that time the experience was then given to that I felt you know um, uh, what I saw him as and what I see him as. Even I'm, I'm talk, putting this into past, but it's even today like this. Um, ever you know, like what I see is, it's almost like this. There is a, there's an energetic field, a yeah. vibration, mm -hmm. and the body is a projection. Yes, there's a body that walks around, but it's more like a projection. Actually, you know, it looks yeah. more like, like you know, beam. Like he's like some. It's like a. It's not. It doesn't look as real. As uh, as the energetic uh, force uh, of his being, you know, mm -hmm. and right there, and that's what I fell in love with, uh, and also um, that's really uh, what I then also felt only to honor in myself, you know, and right. and somehow through his association, um, the mind could not really, you know, whatever he said, you know, a lot of the time the mind would actually not would be completely. You know, it's not present. I couldn't hear what he said. Almost, you know, I, I, the words I couldn't. It, it's like there was complete. You know, like um, stillness, mm -hmm. uh, complete. It's almost like no mind. You know, I could say no mind. In other words, you're so kind of absorbed in or tuned into yes. that, tuned into that energetic field that yes. the words yes. were like ripples on the surface, and you were deep in the ocean. <laughs> yes, there was some maybe the, the words, but they were not made. They couldn't be scanned. They couldn't be identified as this word and that word. That was also just a, an energy, and actually, it couldn't even be considered to be different from the consciousness. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe if if I had to say, it was more like um, um, like a, perhaps even like a laser light that I felt really also kind of tuning here, you know. Yeah, uh, and I felt somehow I don't know. It and, brings and up an interesting point, you know, because I mean, Gangaji and Eli, well, they were with Papaji, and yes, yes, yes. You, and you spent time with them. But when you met Muji, there was that resonance, and there was, and, and yes. you know, it's sort of like different people resonate different, you know, with different teachers, and I think that's maybe why we need so many teachers is that one teacher yes. isn't isn't going to resonate the same way with everybody. Yes. So you, you get a whole lot yeah. of them, and, yeah. and then each one has those people yeah. who, with whom they resonate. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I've heard said, yes. Uh, yeah. it, uh, definitely also I have to say, uh, I, I, case in point, uh, yes, this was my experience because um, I, I had, um, there's definitely great resonance, resonance and love uh, for Muji. That's great. And so in, you see, and that uh, it goes a long way because then you know, you really take uh, somehow maybe it's just also spontaneously. Mm -hmm. um, the message, you know, is also taken in, you know, somehow. Yeah, see, yeah. I, I no, couldn't, keep, there's right. not anything I did. You see, there's nothing I did in that sense. Um, initially, uh, you see, uh, that for the resonance to happen, it's just somehow I was brought into, I had the good fortune to be brought into his, his company and um, and uh, somehow like this, the, this um, unfolded like this. No, I I know what you mean, and I've I've heard stories like that too, where it's it's just by virtue of the sort of attunement with the teacher that one, mm. you know, begins to resonate on the same level as the teacher, and you know that energetic field you referred to gets enlivened in you by virtue of the fact that it's so lively in him and that, that you have this connection with him. Yeah. It's like just like tuning forks, you know, you strike one tuning fork and the mm -hmm. other one starts to ring because of that, you know, the, the, the proximity and the resonance between them. 
Now, what uh, is it that uh, I've discovered uh, through Muji um, is actually, you see, that, um, you see, all of us, we know that we exist, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this everybody, nobody debates this, uh, nobody fights any wars over this. Uh, no, you know, nobody, you know, like this, everybody uh, is in agreement uh, that they exist. Uh, and this is um, <clears throat> to look for that that um, is responsible for the conviction that we exist. That's already, I mean, it's already present, nothing that we create. That is uh, what we uh, can look for, you know. In our search for truth, it is to to look for that, uh, which gives us this, shall we say, conviction, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is the opportunity every human being has, you know, uh, to look for that. And to look for that is not looking outside, but it is turning the attention inwardly. So and a person might say, if a person heard you say that for the first time, yeah. they might say, well, wait a minute, you just said we all know we exist, and uh, and we're supposed to look for that? Or what more is there to look for? I exist, you know? What? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <clears throat> Actually, that's a good point, because we don't really look for that, because we think uh, that is not important knowledge, so to speak. Well, we think it's obvious, you know? It is ob yes, it is obvious. If you come but, up to some guy at a bus stop and say, "Do you exist?" Yes, he'll think yes. you're crazy. But the yes, it's true. <laughs> but um, in, I wasn't perhaps very clear in it. Really, it is that what what we can look for here is we have ideas what it is that as what we exist. Right. So actually, we we exist, but we that existence is equated with. I'm a person. Yeah, not with, or I'm a body. I'm a so, body. Yes, actually, yeah. this is even better. You know, and when I'm this body, body dies, I might not exist anymore. Exactly. You know, it, it, this is actually the common view. Right. And it is backed up by our experience because we experience it this way uh, because uh, somehow uh, the zero point of existence is kind of there. You know, everything is somehow around the body. You know. The body hurts, you know, or it's like this. We have a sense somehow. It is, I mean, I, you know, somehow very strongly, our ident uh, sense of self is associated with the body. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, of course, uh, I mean, it uh, it's looks it's it feels obvious. Uh, but to now actually question this. The, I mean, you see, it feels obvious because uh, it is fueled by our belief also. We, we believe that also. And somehow uh, the belief in that idea, uh, this is somehow how, how uh, the, this, should we say, the consciousness that we are works. You know, the power of the consciousness uh, fueled by belief uh, kind of brings out the experience. It's almost like it's a projection, you know, the light of the consciousness, believe in, in an idea kind of gives us the feeling um, of what we are, what we believe, you know, that's kind of like whatever it is. I like actually the way Muji says it. We're perceiving what we're conceiving. Right. We're perceiving what we're conceiving. Meaning it's already so we 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 interpret the world according we perceive the world according to our interpretation according to our beliefs yes. according to our conditioning yes. and so yes. on. And so how does this relate to your experience? It's kind of an abstract point, but how yes. to, uh, that you're making, but um, yep. you're obviously bringing it up for a reason. Yep. Uh, is it because in your own experience somehow you yes. you came to this realization? Yes, that um, ultimately um, everything. Uh, that we know, like mm -hmm. even the body, the body, mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, we are aware of that. We need, you see, um, we are perceiving the body. We perceive everything we're perceiving. Sure. Uh, and yet, um, something must be behind or 
earlier than that to perceive that. Yeah. So we like cannot the, be we could, what we're perceiving. We could say the perceiver or the something. Perceiver, yes. Right. Something is there, perceiver, let's say that, mm -hmm. uh, or an experiencer that experiences. Yeah. This body also is an experience. Same if idea. Really, we, 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 if you really put it down, uh, we know of the body because somehow there's an experience of that. Yes. And, we can and see yet, it, we smell yeah, it, touch it, feel exactly, it. Exactly, and there's sensations, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that we, you know, like this. Um, but there is something that is earlier than that, which now we can look, we can scan our being. Um, and that's when I say that the intention drawn inwards, you know, to scan, uh, you know, the, the, the field of, consciousness so to speak or the experiential realm for when we whatever we scan there um, it will it's an experience isn't it you know whatever maybe sensations thoughts mm -hmm. whatever but then the experiencer can the experiencer be an experience you know can the experiencer have experience form? It, can the experiencer exactly. experience itself is, is the what experience is uh, what I'm saying is is the experiencer itself does it have form? Okay, it? or is and it formless? Yes, because uh, to just to say like the form, because anything that you pick up, mm -hmm. say even like say now looking for the experience, like the experiencer or this idea of who who am I? What is the, you know to look uh, inside? You know, like scanning. Isn't it that anything that I I I pick up, you know, is uh, maybe sensation, a thought, a feeling, whatever? I cannot be because I'm perceiving that. Yes, there's there's a tr right? there's a tr there's a trinity there of perceiver, mechanics of perception, and object of perception. Yes. And obviously, you know, who who is it that is the perceiver of all these things through the mechanics of the senses? That's what you're getting at. And it's really to um, yes, it's really to to also to to um, yeah, how to say it? I mean, yes, when 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 you when that scanning takes place um, inside inwardly, um, you will you ultimately must come to recognize that. Anything that you can enumerate, you know, anything that you can say this, uh, this, and that, uh, these are there's somehow uh, this uh, in a quality. It has quality. It is something mm -hmm. that you can measure. It so, must. Yeah. It is for that reason an object of mind. You could say. Right. Or an object of perception. Object of perception. Sure. But uh, then we can look. What is it? Is the perceiver of that of these objects? Mm -hmm also an object good question and if it is then who's perceiving that yes but it's really like <laughs> this it's not even you know because it's not so much a Russian doll kind of situation mm -hmm. because really uh, somehow I don't know how to say but it's like this that uh, the rec um, basically somehow you reject everything that has form everything mm -hmm. that you can know mm -hmm. And something is uh, somehow you arrive at this place, mm -hmm. which is the pure I am. Mm -hmm. And so, is, it, is this a process you actually went through th in, under Muji's tutelage? You, you, yeah, I mean, went, is, you, yeah. you systematically rejected all the objects. Um, of it's like you know, um, shall we say? Okay, if you want to say process, it's uh, called self inquiry. It's basically. Okay. Okay, to, so to look okay first of all we 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 say this mm -hmm. perhaps the first um uh the first thing to say is that we are already we are already what we're seeking for we are already the mm -hmm. self or whatever mm -hmm. name it is we are god mm -hmm. and we are whatever it is that uh, we're, we're searching for that is already here now mm -hmm. but it may not be our experience. We, may, our, we, our life may reflect a different 
situation. Many our life may may be like like that we are a person, you know. Yeah, we may understand intellectually that we are what we're seeking yes. for, but our uh, Which nitty is, our nitty gritty day to day experience may not be of that nature. Yes. Yeah. So this is now to say, all right, we'll start there. If one believes to be a person, we'll examine that. You know, uh, we'll start from that point. Whatever it is that makes the person, mm -hmm. uh, usually it is like some kind of experience. It may be, you know, something in the life. Um, same, there's maybe a certain quality. It's not always true, also, because we we may not always live like the person. Uh, but there are certain things maybe that come, conditioning or maybe certain events in life that, you know, kind of where there is a, some tightness coming in. Uh, um, uh, and we can examine, you know, now, uh, we can have a look and yeah. actually it would be to zoom in, uh, to actually see, isn't that what the person is made out of? Is it not, what is it made of? It's something that is perceived. It is some, like the quality of, the quality of experiences which are really, which, which, um, uh, which the person knows, which it seems to be something that uh, is identified with, uh, there is identification with that, that can be uh, looked on. We cannot know this without uh, the perceiver, you see? Uh, right. Anything, so what I'm gathering from what you're saying is that you're trying to describe uh, a, a, a technique or a process of self-inquiry that yeah. you have been taught by Muji, right? And that uh, you, is that what you're doing? I mean, you're sort of a you mm. you because it's this could sound a little abstract, but it, you're sort of saying that this is a procedure you went through in order to arrive at the yeah. sort of essential nature of of who you are. Yes, I don't. Uh... Mm, I don't like so much calling it uh, a procedure because that sound because Muji not at all uh, uh, advises any uh, any um, procedure procedure or process. Well, does he advocate uh, self inquiry? Uh, self -inquiry, of the, of inquiry the, yes. Of the, well, and, isn't yet, that a procedure? What would you call it if not uh, a procedure? It is um, because you see, with procedure, some like sounds a little bit off-putting. It is really, uh, it is kind of uh, looking, um, it is, um, it's an approach. I mean, it, uh, it, no, no, it, I don't want to be too much, I, too much with the uh, words, but what I'm trying to say is like, it, it can be swift, you know, it doesn't need to, there's not really like a long drawn out process about oh, so it. So procedure implies it might take a long time yes, or something. Uh, yeah. So, and that's why I'm kind of trying to, to just clarify. Yeah. Uh, because really it is, um, yes, I don't know how to, to what I'm trying to focus it. on it's, actually, I mean, what I'm yeah. trying to focus on is, is what you know from your own experience. And yeah. I, pr I yeah. presume that in trying to describe this, you're, alluding to something that you yourself have gone yes. through and you know you're trying to sort of I mean people can listen to tapes of Muji probably and, and you know yes. hear an, a more clear description of what yes, you're yes, trying yes. what you're trying to say but what I'm interested in is um, you know what you have discovered what yes. you know and, and and also we can talk about how you discovered it but um, you know, on what basis, uh, what is the authority behind which you are describing yes, yes. this, we don't want to call it procedure, but this process or something, yes. you know, how, I, I presume you're saying that you engaged in something like this yes. and it resulted in uh, an, a discovery for you. Yes. If, yeah. mm, um, perhaps to say is like uh, whatever, uh, we want to call like the, this this insight mm -hmm. that has come to me through uh, the grace of Muji is that um, one morning I woke up and it was completely clear to me what he, what he says that mm -hmm. awakening is not an event. Right. Uh, what he means is like what what he meant to say is that awakening which you're looking for, self-realization and or liberation, 
-hmm. that's already present with us. It's yeah. already here now. Um, and what dawned on me one morning, you see, I don't know, it just it seems to happen that when I wake up in the morning, sometimes insights come like this, you know, it seems like this. And it is, it was, yes, my God, look, even my, the suffering that I have known in life, you see, I couldn't have known about it if there wasn't awareness. Sure. See, awareness must be there first before uh, any suffering could be mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that must be, and there was also, the, that must be first. Awareness. And, of and of course you could have understood that intellectually 10 years ago or whatever, but yes, yes. there was a moment where it it's, kind of it, hit you in the gut more. Yeah, uh, it, it was It was an intuitive recognition and yeah. the significance of that, what it meant. It meant that uh, that my focus on my on the life story no matter you know the the neg we, the mind seems to always be in, um, uh, always focused so much on the negative also because it wants to kind of erase that we only want to enlarge maybe the positive aspects of our experiences um, and so um, but you see for even those negative experiences that there was an intention here to uh, transcend them, maybe to erase them. Actually, that meant to erase them. Sure. Uh, even you see, even that, that those couldn't be known if there wasn't awareness. Yeah. So awareness is the greater. Awareness is the greater. Greater. Meaning, it is is the bigger power. Yeah, it's like it's the common the denominator of all yes, experiences. Without without awareness, nothing exists. Z zilch. Yep. <laughs> so, so basically, what then um, became clear to me is like, you see, attention given to experiences is futile, because they only they have absolutely no power without awareness. So rather than say then. Rather than f putting attention onto experiences, mm -hmm. is to uh, put attention onto put the attention back on awareness. This awareness that by which actually everything else can actually even only exist. Yep. You know. Sure. So this was basically um, the insight that was one. Okay. And you had probably actually heard that said, uh, you know, a hundred times yes. over the years, but somehow in, not until exactly. that morning did it really hit you in the head. Yes. <laughs> and what happens is, you see, this is why intellectual understanding is not enough. Yeah, yeah. Because intellect, it may sound right, but unless it is really, unless it kind of, um, I don't know, until it becomes flesh and blood or something. Yeah, know? there's some level of experiential yeah, yeah. realization that's very different than the intellectual understanding. Yeah, yeah. And that is a point worth emphasizing, I think, yeah. because there's a lot of people who l go to a lot of talks, read a lot of books. They get very good at talking about these intellectual understandings. Yeah. And uh, I've mentioned this saying in almost every interview recently, but there's a Tibetan proverb which says, uh, don't mistake inter understanding for realization. Mm -hmm. And the second part of it is don't mistake realization for liberation. But I think there's a lot of people around mistaking understanding for realization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's um, it is not enough uh, intellectual. Yeah. So, um, and also, I know for myself that um, I, when I first heard uh, Muji say that awakening is not even an event, mm -hmm. I didn't really. I was. I can be honest with you. Uh, I didn't know what that meant. Right. You know, I was intrigued and I was excited to learn about that. Um, um, <laughs> Even though a lot of stillness was already present with me, you know, but mm -hmm. it was somehow I felt manufactured, you know. There was still a mind very much, there was a, so, something controlling it, I felt, you know. Really? I mean, didn't um, it uh, persist even under chaotic circumstances? Let's say you were in a uh, subway a subway station or something, wasn't there that sense of stillness there in the midst of the chaos, or did you lose um, it? That was initially, I mean, it, I, it would, the coming and going of a, a, a experiences, yes. But you see, experiences come and go, and, and that's why what struck me really, and this is really uh, the emphasis is not to uh, 
is really, you see, what struck me right from the beginning meeting Muji is that um, not, it's like, don't worry about experiences. You know? uh -huh. Don't uh, put any attention on that. On specific so much, experiences. Yeah. Not, I mean, what intrigued you? All, all experiences come and go. Sure they do, but that energetic field that you picked up on when you met oh, Muji, yes. that doesn't come and go. Uh, that doesn't come and go. And yet, it, no, no, no. Actually, it does come and go as well. Oh? Actually, you see, the I am also comes and goes. Hmm. So what ultimately because does not come and go? Exactly. This is the question. Okay. Because you see, even the I am comes and goes. Because when you go to bed at night, mm -hmm. um, you, you lose... Uh, you lose everything. Yes, absolutely. You have no body consciousness, no mind. Even the sense of existence also vanishes. But something remains. Yeah. Something remains in a very subtle way, perhaps, mm -hmm. which uh, because you 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 still some knowledge is still present with you when you when you rise up the next morning. Yeah. As as uh, waking state kicks in again, the I am rises, and uh, then um, everything else can come. You know, with I am. Uh, also, personal identification can come, and then other and world. But um, you and see, of course, some people like, say that some people say that awareness is actually when it's in when it's really awake enough is maintained throughout sleep. So the body goes to sleep, mind goes to sleep, senses go to sleep, but pure awareness persists twenty four seven. That that can be a level of uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean that is um, awareness uh, doesn't come and go. But you see, we are putting a word to it, you know. Uh, well, we have to in order to talk yeah, about we're it. Say, we're putting a word to it, but uh, yes, this awareness um, it doesn't come and go, and this is our, our experience. But maybe perhaps we have not put, uh, we haven't examined that also, because we don't, uh, we have it, there's a tendency. Really, I think it boils down to that, um, you know, life itself already, you know, uh, if you're open, mm -hmm. already teaches uh, teaches us the truth, so to speak. You know, uh, because um, mm, because the problem of deep, deep sleep, you know, uh, already you know, like a lot of ideas that we have about ourselves, they cannot really uh, be sustained anymore. Because mm -hmm. if you really sure. believe that I am a I'm a body, you know, right, that shuts down. If that is if that is the center of my existence, you know, the body, if um, we examine if uh, you know the deep sleep where actually we all would admit uh, during some period of time we have no body consciousness mm -hmm. and we are there's also no thinking right no thoughts you know so then the, but still uh, we wouldn't say that we dead we, we died you know no obviously uh, we didn't but yet you see death somehow is very much uh, related uh, it's very much the idea of it is that the body goes you know yeah, uh, the body disappears. So, in, in sense, you know what we are fearing. You know the death we f will fear uh, uh, is. Um, I mean, actually, every night when we go to bed, people actually don't uh, take. Um, people take sleeping pills that they have a good night's sleep, so they can forget about body and mind. <laughs> Nobody is there saying, "Oh, I want uh, waking. I want to stay awake." Pill, you know, I want to stay awake. Right. Pill. So we want. Well, the, really there are, there are those kind of pills too, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about them. Sure, yeah, <laughs> uppers and downers, you know. Um, but oh, okay. let, let me so, ask you this. Um, you know, Muji said that awakening is not an event, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, there are awake people who can say. Like, for, take Adyashanti, for example. I was just listening to some tapes of him. He he talked about a couple of very significant awakenings that took place f for him at yeah. uh, age of 25 and I think 31 or something. And, you know, he could probably tell you what date those happened on if he happened to mark it on the yes, calendar. Yes. So in, in that sense, it seems like an event. But, of course, what everybody says when they realize it is, oh, well, this has really been here all along. You know, I'm yes, just yes. recognizing. So in that sense, it's not something new that has started. Yeah. It's something that has always been there and now now it's just being recognized perhaps yes. for the first time yeah. so so in your own case um was there some point of recognition like that well you mentioned that morning when you realized yes yes you know exactly w w was that it with a big e or was there some have there been sort of other realizations that have come along which um, 
deep that deep under clarified that initial um awakening yes uh, it is um you see it is not uh, uh, so much that awakening happens and then that's it you know really because we're talking about uh, waking up to the infinite mm -hmm. and the way that we're using this word infinite meaning uh, it would be very stri uh, very strange if you wake up and that's it <laughs> so it is it must it, it's quite natural that it would uh, be um, a deepening or that the, yeah. you know that uh, there is that maturing maturing or something sure but to but you see the emphasis uh, needs to be placed that this maturing happens um, this maturing uh, there's a backdrop to that which is unchanging awareness very good yeah that, that's I'm, I'm glad you're making that point you know because a lot of people sort of identify so much with that unchanging awareness that they de-emphasize or even deny the significance yes. of the maturing that can t still continue to happen yes. in the more manifest yes. expression, yes. you know? Because actually, um, the, uh, what has to be said, what is really, what is this about is actually that the mind is again absorbed uh, in its source, which is the awareness. Yes. So meaning like, um, um, that and for some reason, so the spiritual journey, so to speak, is for the mind mm -hmm. uh, to come home. But it doesn't mean that we are not already uh, the self or the awareness. But right. however, it is for the mind um, to recognize the rec that to 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 kind of um, shed uh, the beliefs right into into the untrue yeah you know, meaning it's like you see mind is a, uh, is nothing wrong with the mind is useful because that is actually i would say the faculty mm -hmm. by which uh this perception or the, the world or you know this exp whatever we it is, can be utilized you know like uh, sure. you know like sure. even like you know to like to work with computers you know to the, you see there's a great power in that also you know it's sure. not to it's not to you know, we're not erasing, we're not about to erase that, but where mind uh, really is not helpful, or I say it's kind of producing um, an adverse um, outcome, it's like when mind, uh, when, when mind is allowed to suggest, uh, to whisper to us who we are, Meaning that to say, oh yes, you you are a person. You see, gives you false you ideas. Yes, yeah. because then because mind is then kind of what happens is that that who we are, the consciousness, is limited mm -hmm. somehow. The potential is limited. Um, well, you know, you've heard the word Maya, of course. Yes, Maya. Yeah. You know that it comes from a couple of Sanskrit roots meaning which not. So Maya is that which is not. Yes. And and you know often the word Maya is used to just suggest that the whole world is an illusion, but what it really means, of course, is that it's an illusion for you because you know of your laying on all sorts of conceptions and yes. beliefs and notions and misperceptions that um, cause you to misinterpret or misperceive it as something which yes. it actually is not. Yes. Uh, but uh, what you're just sort of saying is if you can sort of strip away all that and get down to that which actually is yeah. then n you're no longer yes. deluded yes what happens is like basically first you know I like actually uh, what um, I think Shankara uh, uh, Shankarasharya said that but, not, but I've heard it through Ramana mm -hmm. is that the world is not real mm -hmm. the world is Brahman uh, uh, or like this but I also heard like the world is is not real mm -hmm. Only the self is real. Right. The world is the self. Yes. See, that so makes that no sense. You see, first you say world is not real, then you say this only the self is real, mm -hmm. and then the world is the self. Now, it just seems to contradict uh, the first statement. But what it means is that, yes, the world, the way we perceive what it, we, what we, the ideas we have about the world, you see, we're not seeing. Yeah. As things are, right. we're, we're having there's an overlay of our own ideas mm -hmm. 
Um, we're seeing through concepts, glass darkly, you know? as, as you the know, Bible puts things it. Things like this and this, you know, somehow our what we want to believe, you know, it very much uh, shapes our perception. Sure, yeah. And this is what we call the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it said, okay, no, this is not true because everything that we perceive, the world in that sense, what we perceive, is um, only possible through the power of awareness, mm-hmm. which is the self, awareness self, you know, which is basically the, you know, the 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 fundamental essence, which is beyond manifest. It's not a manifest. It's like intuitively recognized through the sense of I am, uh, but it's actually not. You can you. It's intuitively known, but it's not something that you can grasp, you know, you cannot really hold it, you know. The I am, you see, I am as consciousness, it still, you see, has a vibration to it. There's a vibration to it. Um, so, and this is where, why it said also the joy, the love, you are love, you are joy, uh, you are, um, you know, like all these things, you know. Um, because it's natural to the beingness, it's natural to the being. Um, So there is something like this there, mm-hmm. but also experience, you know, but also I am is an experience as like uh, somehow some kind of presence, but then even that one is aware of, even the sense of I am, the sense of existence, we can speak about I exist because we, we, we perceive it, uh, we, we are aware of that. So yeah. something, and now something is beyond that. We call it awareness, but ultimately it's only, you know, a word to point to something that is really, you know, it, it, it is, um, it, that is considered, it is, you know, that mm. is. Pure existence. Real, right. that is real. Mm-hmm. And then from that point, everything else can come. It's also there. The world doesn't disappear, but then you, one sees the world as it truly is. Mm-hmm. as an expression in arising out of this, you know? Yeah. yeah. I get the sense when I hear you speaking that you're not just parroting philosophy that you've heard from yeah. Mu- Muji and other sources. Yeah. That you, you know, you speak, it seems, with a certain degree of confidence and, uh, yeah. and that, you know, you're, there, there's a good deal of this lively in your own, yeah. ex- in your own experience. And yes, you're, spe- yes. you're speaking from that. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Uh, if you have to ask, uh, then uh-huh. I think I'm not, then probably I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing okay. No, no, it, no, I'm just actually, uh, aff- affirming um, yes. it, you know? No, it's true. Uh, it is true. Because, I mean, I could give a pretty good rap when I was 18 years old, uh, uh-huh. you know, okay. uh, having read a bunch of Zen books. You know, I could sit there and riff for a while about, uh, you know, okay. what I, about reality. But, yeah. you know, I, you know, looking back at that, I didn't know what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but I, I sense that, you know, there's a, a certain degree of spiritual maturity that has mm. uh, evolved or dawned in you and that's enabling you to speak not merely from uh, conjecture or, or philosophizing, yes. but, you know, from the heart, from yes. the gut, from the from experience. Yes. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, um, you see, intellectual uh, philosophy, uh, I mean, to just intellectualize about it wouldn't really be why uh, I wouldn't want to be uh, on on the interview today, you know, because I right. don't think I would do anyone. I mean, I would not be truthful, you know, to speak like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, you know, that wouldn't be right, you know. Yeah. So I, the reason I brought it up is just to affirm that. Oh, okay. To, in, ca- yeah, yeah. in case people are listening or wondering, you know, I, I, just that I'm getting the sense that um, mm-hmm. it, you know, the the seeking, doubting, questioning. Zenji yeah. of 15 years ago has uh-huh. has sort of you know yes. evolved or matured into someone who has a a certain confidence in what he is saying and and that's beautiful. I, I mean, you might also say, might you, that um, the sense of seeking, which might have kind of gnawed at you yeah. back back in the old days, a lot of teachers say give up seeking. In my yeah. experience, what happens is if you've really found then you no longer seek, you know, and that's yes, how you give yes. up. That's how you give up seeking. <laughs> that is true. Uh, actually, that is. Um, I mean, we have sometimes. I know with Muji, we sometimes have this uh, 
these um, conversations and he has he says sometimes it's there is somehow like um, um, give up the search you know it could be premature you know because yeah. that what because sometimes it's misunderstood mm -hmm. uh, because give up the search um, uh, really is like it was probably said to somebody who in the in the, it's like to say to say uh, very similar like this. Uh, if I first it is affirmed that we are already the self, mm -hmm. that's how we start out, right. and then we explore what uh, what is responsible that we don't know this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, still we we're making exploration, but right. to say but we are already the self and then not explore. Very good. Uh, it would be like you see. And I think give up the search. That is not meant to mean uh, not to not to take explore. responsibility, not to follow the heart. If the, the urge in the heart is there to explore these quest these questions, you know, yeah. then of course, you know, why then one pursues that. But uh, the seeking at some point, actually, uh, I'm reminded of what, how Muji says it. Let the seeking drop away by itself. Beautiful. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, because and, you're not and, and not, for that. not yeah. give it up prematurely. Yeah. And I think in a related point is that, you know, one can very well have actually given up the search in the sense that we're talking about yeah. having having really, you know, have the seeking has dropped away. Yeah. And yet one can still be fascinated with all this stuff, you know, going to satsangs and reading books and all that. It doesn't but it's done in a different sense. It's yeah. it's not like Oh my God! I've got to sort of discover what's really being said here. Find something new. It's more like icing on the cake. It's like an an enrichment, an enhancement. Yeah. You know? Do, would you agree with that? Uh, actually, what how I would say this is like, um, in my own case, you see, uh, I don't see that. You see, the maturing takes place. You see, there's something mm -hmm. like one once, once you discover. Um, this uh, this beautiful self somehow like this uh, maybe there's something that honors that as well you know mm, yeah. and and it is somehow you see if tendency of mind still you know mind still com comes you know mm -hmm. it is like it is not like so it is really um, it is ongoing so meaning to the opportunity is always there to discover what is real and what is not somehow it becomes like really one one immer it's almost like uh, uh, one is co uh, it's like to understand mind in the workings of the mind and to to see who, you know to be ma to the master become the master of the mind maybe mm -hmm. it's like this to say uh, to to always look for the for the, to be to to whenever whenever the limitation rises, you know, because it's not like this that uh, we come to. I mean, for myself, I have to say now this at this point, um, challenges uh, do come, you know, where mm -hmm. uh, uh, one has to, one. Ha I have to check in, you know, what is sure what, what's happening here, you know, am I am I is there my, you know am I drawn to to Am I associating or am I aligning myself with mind? You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I mean, uh, but it's not. Um, I think at this point, I would say it is not so much seeking uh, what is not what is not known, but rather um, to affirm what has been or to f to f defend what has been conquered. You know, what, to defend what has been recognized yeah because you see the mind can always come and make stir things up in the stir yeah. but to to kind of like to check in and see all right uh, but what voice is speaking here what is happening because it's not even only the voice it's like even our actions i feel our actions in life and it, it can um, come from uh, a limited uh, mental i mean mm -hmm. from identification you know sure uh, identity, I mean, perhaps I would say, is like um, putting the zero mark uh, of um, ex uh, of who I am into experience. You know, I'm yeah. pushing like the zero mark, okay, in the experience. Uh, behind that, there's nothing. You know, at the source of who I am is in that experience. 
um, <clears throat> uh, I as a you know I as a person is, is the I am the body idea functioning, so I'm operating like this, and that identity can come, but when it comes, one can again check in to see all right is that however not what I'm perceiving is that yeah. not a perception, so the kind of so you see it's like always. It's looking, you know. It's checking out. Yeah, and it uh, becomes kind of second nature to yeah, do it that. Becomes, yeah, it is it's, second nature. Quick, I mean, an analogy quick. that might illustrate what you're saying is, you know, once you've learned how to b ride a bicycle, it's pretty automatic. It's second nature. You don't think about how to balance yeah. or anything. But yeah. you you do have to constantly sort of correct and and make adjustments and mm. you know steer this way. And if you're and something could cause you to almost lose your balance, you check. So there's there's still even though it's kind of automatic, there's this sort of balancing process that that continues you know does that, does that help at all or is that do you think like it's um, inappropriate yes um and that only again to say uh, this balancing process if you want to uh, use that uh, is for the mind you know as yeah. it establishes itself again in in um right in is, it, is it is it sort of getting off track and and then you can sort of check in as you say yes, and, yes. and get back into to, to yeah when the con when when consciousness uh, again associates more with uh, the belief uh, of being body and mind you know uh -huh. it can be quickly corrected uh, could be it's like through um through uh, like a checking in you know so like Mm -hmm. and, and this is also important to stress because um, what I fi sometimes feel is um, when somebody has uh, had an awakening, <clears throat> it can be that uh, we were that becomes a mem. Say when an event like this happens, when mind again asserts itself in some sense, uh, um, we can when we don't look because like self inquiry then meaning checking in like uh, mm -hmm. it is not really a process but it's like really to just see what is who's observing this you know right yeah uh, who 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 is this I you know that is observing yeah. and so um, when that is you see sometimes what happens is that people just dismiss the experience it's almost like a mental rejection of that. Uh, which leaves you only in mind again. Hmm. Really, it is one has to really take it, uh, meaning like, okay, my experience right now is that I'm a person, uh, and so um, even it doesn't matter that uh, yesterday I discovered or last a moment earlier uh, I knew to be the, to have been the self. Mm -hmm. uh, in the moment that person, the person personal identity is there and is strongly associated with again one can check in to to see but isn't that you know but who is experiencing this who right. uh, who's the experiencer of this to yeah. be go to the experiencer to the source mm -hmm. and also establish that this experiencer doesn't have form because for as long as uh, it has form it is not the true experiencer it is mm -hmm. not it is not the awareness that we're talking about not the awareness that is the essence of uh, of existence but you see, this is just like this. It's like very quick, like this. But what what tends to happen is that, <clears throat> uh, or sometimes it can happen uh, that um, mind rises, uh, uh, identification rises with mind, or it's the content of mind, and then it says, "Oh, but I know I'm not that." <laughs> and you know, but you see what it is? It's like a mental rejection of the experience. Hmm. Not actually look, you know, not to check in to see, you know, it's like it is uh -huh. mind on top of mind. I see, yeah. Mind on top of mind, but that's why actually every time one has to come back to the source, one hmm. has to find the source again. Uh, that's how you one affirms. It's not so much like just to in be, uh, reject like this right. Quick, you know? And have you found that the longer you have done this, the more kind of. Um, automatic it is and also the less the mind tends to deviate yeah it, uh, sure it is something that becomes easier uh, because yeah, yeah. it becomes second nature second nature yeah second nature as you say even though it's our first nature you know we're right doing right. a second nature but it um, almost and really I mean don't yeah. you don't you also find that um, they're having you know 
become established in this to such an extent it's it's pretty much there under all circumstances even though it might be a little bit diminished at at times by something but you know that if you notice you know there it is even in the midst of this um, intense experience you might be having i uh, you see, when something uh, like this, as you describe, um, mm -hmm. when something, the, the waves are like coming and going something, that is an experience. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who I am, who you are, is right. not an experience. No. It's ex see, the but it's a, con see, it's a continuum also, whereas experiences are, are temporary, it's a con yes. that, who we are yes. ultimately is what a continuum. I, if, if, um, I know what you're saying because I feel what you're saying is uh, sometimes um, you see maybe there's a, a certain joy there and sometimes it's diminished a little bit or mm -hmm. something maybe there's a certain because there may be something we call bliss or joy yeah, but those are experiences like these yeah. are experiences yeah. so we may be compelled to say okay today I feel a little less bliss or mm -hmm. less maybe there's a little bit more whatever yeah. the feeling like little core, like Roughness, little, or or like roughness or something like this, yeah. and um, well, that's going to happen. If yes, but if I um, take a reading on that for myself, if I say, "All right, today I'm not," you know, something is not right because you see, then I'm actually what that means is this is identity. You know, I identify with the the waves that appear. Yeah, but what I'm suggesting is that you know that that recognition you had as a boy that. I do uh, not age. Yes. You know, that, that, that sort of pointed at uh, a dimension or an element or something that we've been talking about as the self or as being or as ex pure existence. And that, that pure ex now, you know, 40 years later, mm -hmm. that, that pure existence may have uh, been realized to the extent that um, despite the waves on the surface of the oh. ocean, despite the ups and downs of rough this day, blissful that day, you know, that, um, that, o that oceanhood status, you know, that, okay. that pure existence status, that, that continues, you know, for men yes, may come yes, and yes. men may go, but I go on forever, yes. you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I haven't really, um, I usually don't pay too much attention to it. I do uh, sometimes, yes. Uh, what happens is that maybe uh, certain the, the the quality of my experiences maybe in a certain way that uh, are not as pleasing, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps. But um, but, it, but even identity, when they aren't, identity, if identity rises with that, mm -hmm. one can't. I can't. Uh, then you check in again. You know, I check in. Yeah. You know? uh, so. Uh, yeah, I, I can only say like this. So it's like, um, yeah, I can. Uh, that's. I think I, I. I cannot say more right now. Okay, no problem. I'm just kind of pointing you towards or suggesting that. Um, I mean, let's let's talk about Muji for a second. I, I don't imagine that Muji has to keep checking in so much in order to reestablish his self-realization or his you know the pure the the pure awareness that's lively in him yes um and you know to to whatever extent um we have grown in, in the same way and so i was just kind of what i was alluding to is just that you know maybe that's what you're noticing also that um, uh -huh. okay. you know without even having to check in or regardless of whether you feel ha you know smooth or rough or blissful or depressed or whatever that uh, yeah. on underlying that and and as a continuum there is you know this self awareness without without yes, needing yes. To, without needing to do anything it's not dependent on anything okay. it's not caused by anything it's it's yes, like the yes. found the foundation of life uh, yes that's true yeah and yet when identity comes which can happen it can I get mean, obscured uh, then in that moment the feeling is uh, you see, because this is uh, why awareness, the knowledge of awareness is uh, kind of uh, eclipsed, is because strong identity is there. Yeah. So, um, so and that's why I have to say, uh, if that identity, uh, to speak on truthfully, uh, still also arises for me. Okay. So no in problem. those moments when identity comes, 
the feeling is, uh, you know, being at square one, perhaps. Yeah. But uh, I know, see, it's about then for me to check in. Sure. In. And you I know, would suggest that it's never a hundred percent. You know, I don't think that you know that I that that pure awareness or pure existence can ever be obliterated by. Well, maybe it, it can be extreme, but there's it's always there, and you know it and, is. It is always there. Yeah. Uh, when identity rises, um, you see that is the, the nature of identity. This is this is identity is to to um, is seemingly the knowledge of um, the underlying awareness, or sub, uh, sometimes the word substratum is used. I like mm -hmm. sure. uh, somehow. Uh, you see, even identity. Uh, that which we call identity, meaning like an experience of some kind with which there is some history, uh, right. where there is somehow like identification. Oh, it's, so, uh, I'm me, it's me. Ah, oh, this is so me, or this uh, like right. whatever, like this. This um, is also observed. You see, sure. in the mo you see when it's strong, when identity is strong. Um, uh, actually, even like this, that we can speak like this, uh, that identity arises, means. Uh, you're not 100% identity because there's awareness of that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of that, what I was getting at yeah, in a way yes, that, yes, that yes, there is yes. a, you know, you're not so gripped by it as to be yes. completely oblivious. You know, that yes, there's yes, there's yes, a yes, yes. there's that still that witness or yes, that yes. that recognition. You know, that that can actually kind of say, okay, wait a minute, now what is this? Let's let's check in, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, I, th I think my dog is telling me that um, it's almost time to end this interview. I see, and I see. Because we're going to be going someplace. But okay. this has been enjoyable. We've, been, we've covered, okay, I think, a lot of ground. Too. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me uh, just wrap it up by once again wishing you a happy birthday. Thank it's you very much, kind of Rick. very auspicious yeah. that I got to talk to you on your birthday. Oh, lovely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy. Yeah, and very please give my regards to Muji, whom I've I never met, that. but yes. um, I'd love to meet him someday and even to yeah. interview him someday if, he would, if he's oh, feeling up to very it. Good. Very good. Yeah. And for those listening or watching, um, I just want to conclude by saying that this, is, um, this interview is part of an ongoing series. Um, and if you'd like to listen to more of them, uh, go to batgap.com, which is an acronym for Buddha the Gas Pump. And there you will see this one and all the others. And you can sign up for, to be notified by email every time a new one gets put up. You can subscribe to a podcast if you like to listen to this sort of thing when you're commuting to work. And there are little discussion groups that kind of... Uh, spring up on, uh, with each interview um, where people sort of chat about you know what was discussed so you can do that too so thanks for watching or listening and thank you again Mu uh, Zenji <laughs> <laughs> I almost said Zenji. Muji see you get, you get you're really yeah. tuning into the guy <laughs> so next and now we have also called me Papaji yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sh I might have said, so thank you Ramana <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. and we'll see everybody next time thanks for watching yeah.